Hi there everyone, once again I'm here with Laura from the Royal Society and we are amongst the Royal Society boxes 150 metres underground at the Winsford Rock Salt Mine at the Deep Store facility and we've got something we're going to open here and we are going to open a box and then we're going to open a biscuit tin. So Keith's given us a bit of a mission here to go on. So this box lives within our tins cupboard in the Royal Society archive. But and you've brought it here to the deep store facility underground because yeah. it's so dry. It's perfectly dry, which is what we want for this. So it looks like biscuits, it's not biscuits. What does that say? It might be biscuits. Can you imagine if we open this and it turns out <laughs> it is full of biscuits? That would be fantastic. Yeah, well, let's see. So this has been sealed, kept on site in London since 1953. This instrument should be kept absolutely dry. Any person taking it over should be warned to open the tin in such a way that no moisture will condense on the instrument. So we are going to open this, but first of all, let's find a little bit about its story. You've brought a few yeah. documents along as well, haven't you, Laura? So, first of all, we know this instrument was funded by a parliamentary grant and aid. So that's money that's given by the government to the Royal Society to fund scientific investigations. So that was in 1950. The person who applied for the funding was A.J. Harding. And here he's just kind of outlining the experiment, what he hopes to achieve and what exactly he needs the grant for. So. What we have here, I think, is this one Hilga Schwartz vacuum thermocouple. So this is all the boring bureaucracy and grant applications that I normally wouldn't allow on objectivity. <laughs> but Laura loves all oh, these, love she loves all this yeah, stuff. So yeah. there we go. What else have you got, Laura? So that's the funding for the project. Here we've got the outcome. So this is the paper that AJ Harding published about the experiment which uses apparatus. Right. So he's done it in collaboration with R. G. W. Norrish, who was a fellow. And Norrish was a Nobel Prize winning chemist. That's right, yeah. So this is heavy hitting science. Yeah. So they got their money, they got their instrument, and then they did some real science and they published this paper, The Role of Formaldehyde in the Oxidation of Ethylene. It's a pretty impressive looking mm -hmm. paper and it wouldn't have been possible without this instrument, which has not been opened for many years and is yeah. in a biscuit tin. Let me, let me it glove up. Feel a little bit. Tie it actually. Does it? I'm not sure. Do you want to have a go? You're making me do it. <laughs> Carefully, okay. Here it's yeah, coming, it's, it's coming. coming. It moved. We need a vice. I don't I don't know. <laughs> normally this is normally I get Keith to do this sort of thing. <laughs> I, I can't get it to move. <laughs> oh. oh Keith's wedged it down. What did Keith do? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here we go. You ready for the ginger biscuits? <sighs> this is gonna be great. Oh, okay. It's not biscuits. No, no, no biscuits. <laughs> Let's see, what have we got? I'll give you that. Yeah. Here's the thermocouple. Okay. Anything else in there amongst the fluff? No ginger biscuits left? No. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, look. look. There's some, some little doodahs on yeah. the end there. So I think the Royal Society has a, a collection of these contraptions that they kept for the purposes of these experiments. We haven't got many left, actually, so that's why this thing is a bit special. And used by a Nobel Prize winner. Yeah. There we go. So, what do you think? I mean, are you... Uh, I don't know if anyone would use it now. I guess we can put it back in the tin cupboard. Seriously, I'm not joking. I think Laura was honestly more excited by the grant <laughs> application than she was by the thermocouple. <laughs> All right, we're about 150 metres underground. This is the Winsford Rock Salt Mine. It's a huge, huge mine. It's still working a few miles in... I think maybe that direction. They're actually mining rock salt as we speak with huge machines. But this did 100 years ago, more than 100 years ago, used to be like an old-fashioned mine and people with picks and axes mm -hmm. and stuff. Yep. If we look up there, you can actually see evidence of the old mining methods there where they're doing it by hand. 